Hi everyone, today I'm going to be doing some parts of this picture. This is the um, calendar page for this week, um, well from the daily, from the weekly planner, sorry, and I thought I'd try a few bits. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to try my Black Widow pencils out in this planner. I haven't tried them before, so I thought it might be fun. I'm just going to zoom into a little bit, and I thought it might be fun to do our little monkey friend here. I assume he's a monkey, not not that knowledgeable on these sorts of things. I thought it might be fun to have a go at him and maybe some of these florals or maybe some leaves. We'll just do a little patch and uh, and we'll see how we get on. So we're going to start with the foxy brown, I thought. Um, and I thought I would just go all over him to start with, with this. And then we'll um, sort of put in some details after. I'm not really sure. Um, what colour he's supposed to be so I'm just guessing I haven't sometimes I will um, look on my search engine to find out what colours to do but today I'm just going to guess and have fun with it you know we don't always have to be going for accuracy sometimes I find it makes it more fun to uh, just guess and go with it so as I say this is just a base of this colour and some of the parts of the hem will stay just this colour but other parts we will um, shade or even just change the colour with our other browns. Now the good thing about the Black Widows I find is that they go on quite well, um, quite vibrant and so you don't need to add lots of layers which I find I do with things like polychromos, you sort of want to build the layers up but uh, I could now leave that like that and it wouldn't look totally old. I'm not going to, but there is that possibility. So I'm going to go for the next darkest brown. This is the tarantula. And I'm going to think about where I want him a little bit darker. So I'm thinking on the tail here where it meets the body, there'll be a bit of shadow there. And maybe we'd put a bit of the tip. But also if we go just along the edge of the tail, I'm hoping this will work and then on the other side as well it can sometimes help us give the impression that it's a bit more rounded a bit more three-dimensional yeah I think that's worked pretty much bringing the colour in a little bit to the centre can help as well and it looks like then the light is sort of catching the centre so it's a bit more rounded in shape so that's the tail under the chin here we need to put a little bit of shadow actually I want this whole top bit I think in a darker colour where it's sort of furry I don't really know what this is whether there's a type of monkey that has this sort of top bit of extra thick fur but uh, I'm going to do that darker and then I'll come in with my other brown to do shadows but I'm going to do a bit of this around the face just around here Johanna seems to have indicated from her drawing that some parts need to be darker and lighter I don't like looks like he's wearing glasses I'm going to darken that up just a little bit and inside the ears now going to try and give the idea of a little bit of shape as well by putting some shading there and bringing it in so on the edge and same on the arms a little bit it's really quite simple and it can just add the illusion that he's a bit more rounded in his body I'm just going to grab the darkest brown which is the huntsman and do a little more like where I was going to do under the chin we can now do with this one because obviously we've got that darker colour going on and we can do a little bit under here so give a sort of idea that this furry part is giving some shade to the rest of his body but we couldn't do that in the lighter colour because the fur is that colour so it would have not shown up going to overemphasize these edges here and here and here uh, maybe 
you a little bit on the end of the hand just a bit because the hands are a bit dull I'm going to go back to the tarantula now and just do a few finishing touches so over that hand just bring up some colour a little and then just this bit didn't, looked a bit like it wasn't properly faded in to me I think that will do for him. I think he's quite cute. Now some blooms. Let's move up to here. We've got these three flowers and we could do them all the same or we could do them different. Now because we've only got three flowers in the whole page it might be fun to do them in different colours. So I'm going to start with this lovely um, amethyst colour and I think I'll do this large one and I'm going to make it quite dark in the middle and then reduce the colour as I go towards the edge I'm going over that sort of seedy bit the minute I shall think about that in a minute it's easier to go over it this needs sharpening and I can make it look a little more even it quite easy to make these look even but I just need a little bit of help from a sharper pencil there we go so I'm just trying to make sure that as I reduce the pressure going up towards the tip of the leaf that I don't have a sort of line that it just is smooth and that all comes with practice um, it's about understanding how much pressure and how many layers you need as you go through those transitions of colour I suppose and uh, as you get to know both yourself and your pencils it helps you get that better. I'm trying to just match it up with the, this one so it needs to be a little darker I think at the bottom. Now these creases in the flower here we could use these to help us to give some um, idea of Oh, I am really not having much luck today with pencils, they keep breaking on me. I don't know whether I'm being heavy handed today or quite what's going on. It's quite tiresome, I spend, spend most of my day sharpening <laughs> rather than colouring. Oh, now that one just broke. I don't know if it broke into the sharpener. No. bits of sharpenings everywhere. Right, we'll try that and hope it's okay. It's not sharpened brilliantly, it's my fault, it's not the pencils. So, so anyway, those shapings there, what it could indicate is that the flower is dipped in at that point and so it might mean colour darker here and leave a light outline. Um, it, I find the colouring like that a little tricky so uh, I'm going to stick to this method so we're going dark and then lighter towards the tip now what with these seedy bits in the middle we've got a couple of options now we've coloured over them we need to either colour over them now in something darker which is going to sit on top of this purpley colour or we um, we can use a pen to uh, to put put some a blob of colour and we could choose a darker purple if we've got that sort of colour a glitter pen, a white, a black we've got a lot of options that one's darker isn't it than the others and even it up a bit so that they're all the same sort of amount of colour on each leaf petals. <laughs> Looks a bit old. So 
So I am probably going to go with the hmm, probably going to go with the white gel pen option because I think it can add a prettiness as well. Okay, next colour I am going to go for the plum pudding. It's a rather cute colour. We're going to colour it in the same way because I think it will help it to tie in because they look the same these plants just different these flowers so we could have done them all the same colour as I said I made the decision not to do that simply because it would make it a little more interesting well I also on this page often I will do the same colours of leaves across the whole page but I'm not going to do that on this page because there's so many leaves and so few um, flowers so I will vary the colour of the leaves across the page so that's that one that was simple and I think I'm gonna go for the um, cyanide pink for the other one we've got quite a pretty sort of floral bunch going on now the it will be missing oranges and yellows this picture but I there's a butterfly two butterflies which I might do in those colors just to add you know another color into the mix really or else it's going to be very green otherwise and uh, we could just do the butterfly in the pinks but I think it'll look nice to have a bit of a warm color in here into the mix now I'm not going to do a background on this ribbon design and we could there's all sorts of possibilities but I've already decided not not to right I'm going to do a few of the leaves not many just to get you going um, the black widows have four greens I'm going to start with the fang green which is quite a dark green because we're putting it in here that's going to be dark isn't it if you think about it because there'll be shadow in there and then fade it up and the same with this one now we could leave it like this and not put another green on top but I will put another green on top in a moment and show you going okay, right into here that dark and what I'm doing is I'm putting quite a lot of layers here and then reducing that down as we get to the tip and I'm going to make these the same I'm going to do all the leaves that are around the flowers the same but I'm only going to colour these for you um, today okay and I'm going to use there is a the Everglade green on top just push it up a little so you can to uh, just bring it all together I'm going to put it on top of all of it so that it can blend it up and it um, helps to sort of tone it all in together there's lots of good pairings in the four greens so you should be able to get quite a lot of different shades out of this uh, set of pencils you can of course just use them on their own you can combine them with yellows and browns as well as with each other so you can get quite a lot of different colours but I'm going to leave that there what I am going to do is put this butterfly for you um, I just fancy doing that so I'm going to grab my orange this is the pumpkin to start with and I'm going to have quite a build up of colour there but less as we go out and the same here so quite a lot here and then less as we go out I am going to take it right to the edge actually there and then I'm going to grab a lighter shade um, the toadstool and do this one do a similar 
a darker in the centre, lighter to the edge. We haven't got a lot of room to do that in, but that's fine. The body of the butterfly I'm going to do in this um, spider web. Now, ideally, I'd want it darker on the edge, so I'm going to try and do that with the black. The black is called Black Widow. So I'm just going to go around the head and body in the black just to try and make the body look slightly more rounded. Can't really see, but it doesn't matter. And we're going to add some more black to here. I was thinking of using a pen, but I think this will work. So we want the markings on the butterfly in black. I said you could use a black fine liner. I had, had considered doing that because this is a very nice vibrant black. I think it will work itself. Okay, now we need some finishing touches. So I'm going to grab my a pen. Bear with me, here we go. And I'm going to put some white dots firstly on the butterfly. really lifts it I think just a few dots here and there and then on our florals we're going to do these whoops now I think this pink turns the white pink so it's not going to show up completely white it might be okay maybe it's the castle arts that does that no it's going I can see it's slowly fading it's like a polaroid camera picture it starts off okay and then it fades but you can't really see in the camera so maybe I'll just pretend it's fine <laughs> now we could also do a few more um, dots on the flowers sort of around the edge I think it it can make it look quite pretty I've got to be really careful now because unplanned and uh, I'm going to end up putting my fingers in the gel pen so just working up the sides can be quite pretty one doesn't show up because the pencil's faded oh. sometimes you have to just work it a little to get the paint out it will always clog Oops. and now the same with our little one now these are going to turn out to be pink the others have gone pink now but I'm just going to leave it I think there's something about the pink, the pigments in pink that do this. I noticed that I've got a Prismacolor pink that does it, but polychromos don't, interestingly. It's obviously just all to do with the way the pencil is made, but I find it a little bit irritating that it changes colour, but maybe I would be better off using a sort of silver or glitter pen that might not change colour. This one doesn't show up lots on this one, it's a smaller um, flower. But there we go, I'm going to leave it there. I should just zoom out so you can see the flowers and the butterfly. Bear with me. And the monkey. So there we go. So I've done a little bit there for you. I am obviously going to finish this off and I will put a finished copy somewhere, um, possibly at the end of the video actually, for you to see as a, as a photo still at the end so you can have a look. But you should be able to from here um, go ahead and, uh, and finish it all off. So I hope that was useful. I hope that got you started. Um, thank you very much for watching and happy colouring.